Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing a very important topic. It's going to be seed starting using a method called winter sowing. In this video, I'm going to be going through a detailed explanation of uh, winter sowing and what it is, why we do it, how we do it, when we do it, and who can do it. That's all today, right here on Garden Jen's Journey. Winter sowing, what is it? I've heard a lot of people think that winter sowing means the we're growing things in the winter. And while that's possible with some methods like using cold frames or high tunnels or some sort of protection like that, that is not what winter sowing is. Winter sowing is a seed starting method where we plant our seeds in containers like these and then we set them outside in the environment during the winter time. Now the seeds that are in these jugs will stay dormant until the temperature is right for whatever seed you have planted in here and then they will germinate and start growing right in their own miniature greenhouse. I say that as I'm doing this video inside my bigger greenhouse. But if you've followed me along on this journey for any amount of time, you'll know that this greenhouse doesn't work as a greenhouse per se, but more as a hot house during the summer months where I grow my uh, peppers. I grow my hot peppers in here. But during the winter, it's really not good for anything except for storage. So winter sowing helps people be able to start their own seedlings, organic seedlings even, um, without having to have expensive large grow light setups in their homes, worrying about having to take those seedlings that they grew inside, outside, back and forth, back and forth, hardening them off. It also uh, helps, you know, if you don't have uh, the space or the funds to have a large greenhouse, and by means this one is not large, you can still grow tons of seedlings using milk jugs or other similar containers. Now there's a lot of different videos going around about different ways that people do winter sowing and that's perfectly fine. There's uh, more than one way to skin a cat as some people would say. What I'm going to be sharing with you here in this video today is how I've been taught and how I've been doing it successfully for over six years. This will be my seventh year. So what I'm sharing with you is how I personally do it and have had success doing it. You can follow other people and do things that other people might say. That's all up to you. That's your choice. That's, you know, do what you want to do. I'm just going to share with you what has worked for me for over six years with proven results. The first thing that I want to discuss is how we winter sow to kind of give you a brief rundown. We use milk jugs, water jugs, juice jugs, um, things that are see-through. You want them clear enough where the sun will get through them. Uh, there's some gallon uh, milk jugs that are like white and opaque and the sun really can't get through it. You want to think about uh, these being a miniature greenhouse. So what does a greenhouse look like? It's see-through so the sun can get in and uh, warm up the things that are inside. So that's what you want to look for. Um, you also don't want to go with small things. People try to use the shallow seed starting um, uh, trays that you can get for seed starting and those don't work um, even if they were to sprout because they're too shallow. Um, if you're growing lettuces and things like that, 
that'll work for a little time but not for a big time why because one of the big things about winter sowing is once you put your seeds in these jugs you're not going to be moving those seeds or seedlings around until it's time to plant them directly in your garden space so those seedlings will be in this jug and need this space to be able to grow until it is time to put them in your garden beds so if you have the shallow little trays you don't have room for those seedlings to grow to full maturity before it's time to transplant them especially if you're doing large plants like tomatoes or peppers you know those things get pretty big so you need uh, adequate space which is why it's highly recommended to use a gallon sized jug or the large uh, like 48 ounce 64 ounce juice jugs um, some people even use the big cheese ball containers uh, dog biscuit containers the big plastic ones um, because they're big um, the problem with those ones are is usually the lids are like this big and you don't want them that big you want the lids to be uh, small because you want to trap the heat that's in the jugs in the jugs to give the greenhouse effect and if you've got a big hole in it your heat's going to escape, your moisture's going to escape. But there are some things you can do to fix that. Then we're going to cut our plastic containers almost completely in half. But we're going to leave about an inch uh, of a, of a hi hinge uh, on our containers. Uh, the hinge is important because when it gets closer to time to transplant, or if you live in a warmer zone where it's like, 80 90 degrees almost every day when it gets closer to your planting season you're going to want to vent your uh your containers so you need to have that hinge on there so you can open it up slightly but be able to close it back down and the hinge keeps it as one piece instead of two separate pieces that are hard to put back together so the hinge is important and then uh soil we use high quality soil um I use happy frog soil um, it's an organic soil it's got all sorts of microbes and microorganisms and all sorts of good stuff in them you want a good high quality potting soil to be in these jugs again it's because the seedlings are going to be in the jugs from the time you plant them the seeds to the time you transplant them however for soil you do not want additional uh, fertilizers or moisture retention uh, chemical components in there. Uh, vermiculite and perlite, that's okay, but we're talking about the additives that they specifically put in to retain water. With the seedlings in this jug, you want to have good adequate drainage and you don't want them holding on to so much moisture that they start to mold. Then your seeds go in on top of the soil or if seeds need to be in darkness you plant them just slightly below the soil surface we do not follow the recommended seed depth and seed spacing guidelines on packages for winter sowing i will show you some pictures of some of my containers that i have winter sown um, right here and you will notate how many seedlings I have for some of my different crops and I really cram them in there for uh, lettuces and spinach and carrots and uh, the one the crops that are like really small when they first start out as seedlings you can cram quite a few into here I would say that when I'm planting I do around a hundred seeds I don't actually count I just sprinkle along the top um, but they grow just fine for larger plants like tomatoes peppers eggplants plants that get a pretty decent size I put about five in a one gallon uh, uh, container I basically use uh, what it, uh, if you look at the the five die pattern that's how I plant my tomatoes peppers eggplants and those types of plants if I'm doing corn beans peanuts things like that I will do the nine die pattern in this um, and it works very well 
but for most other plants, if the seedlings themselves are pretty small and compact for the most part, I just sprinkle them over top. I don't even count them. And they do just fine. After you plant your seeds, then you're going to want to make sure that they are watered. Usually we put moistened soil into the jug first. It's just easier to do it that way. Then we plant our seeds and then we moisten the top again just to make sure that it is moistened. After that, we're going to take some good duct tape and we're going to close our container up and duct tape that area that we had cut it open because you're resealing the greenhouse. After that, you put them outside right in uh, full sun that's a great area to put them um, if you're in a warmer zone you'll need to put them in an area that gets some partial shade when your temperatures start getting up there uh, but you'll know if you're watching your jugs if you start seeing your plants stress out that you'll need to move them to a shadier area that gets less direct sun so that's the basis of what winter sowing is and how we do it it's a very economical way to grow your own organic seedlings. When do you winter sow? The name kind of gives it away. You plant your seeds in the winter. But Jen, the ground's frozen. Of course it is. And that's the point is um, you want to plant your seeds when things are dormant in your area. What this does for you is it gets your seeds ready so when the temperatures start getting right for that particular seed, it's already out there. It's already waiting for the temperatures to wake it up and get it growing. Who can winter sow? Anybody can winter sow. You know, when people think of winter, they tend to think of snow and ice and things like that that the northern folks get. Um, but it's whenever uh, the plants in your area are dormant for a set period of time. That's when you put uh, your seeds out. And then when the temperatures start getting right for your growing season, those seeds in the containers will start growing too. We're letting Mother Nature uh, get these plants growing. I think I've covered everything, but if not, be sure to ask a question in the comment section below and if it's not answered later on in this video. Again, I want to emphasize that I've been doing this for six years and the method that I'm going to show is what has worked for me for six years. And there are other people who's done it other ways and it's worked for them but I'm just sharing with you what I have had success doing. So let's go inside and we're gonna do some planting today. Welcome to my kitchen table. This is where I do my jugs. And uh, when I get going, I, I usually do about four jugs at a time and I'll have them on a, the, a lid of a plastic tote uh, so I don't get water all over my table. But today I'm just doing one jug to show you uh, how to do it. And uh, so I'll just clean up the water afterwards. But I'm going to show you how to do it from start to finish. So if you're brand new, I'm going to show you um, how we do it start to finish. First, we have our jug here and it's just a regular gallon jug it's the kind that you can see through again you do not want jugs that are white or very difficult to see through because the sun won't get through it you do not have to worry about getting your labels off because there's plenty of surface area for the sun to get through and uh, after uh, the end of the season the labels will peel off anyways most jugs you can use for a couple of seasons before they become too brittle that you have to throw away. The lids, throw them away. You want the opening so rain and snow and air circulation can take place. What we want to do is we want to put in some drainage holes so the water can drain out. To do that, I use a soldering iron 
some people use drills and things like that but for me a soldering iron works best I usually do these ahead of time on a nice day outside because you don't want the fumes of melting plastic but since I'm only doing one jug and I want to show you guys how to do it I'm going to do it inside today I just got my soldering iron heated up you can see it's got quite a bit of a debris on it because I use this all the time for these jugs. So for this size container, I put five holes in the bottom. I'm going to just put the hole right in there. And then we're going to put one in the center. So we got those five holes. And then we're going to put one an inch up on this side an inch up on that side and I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to put it outside now we have our drainage holes next step is cutting this jug open we're going to cut it in half just below the handle we're going to use this part here right below the handle as our hinge point so what I like to do is I grab a, where it starts to form like a corner and I pinch this and then we're going to take some uh, handy dandy heavy duty kitchen scissors and just cut it open. There we go. kitchen scissors went to pot so I'm just grabbed another set of my utility scissors and again we're going right below the handle here all right there we go we've got this open and we have our hinge See how nicely that opens up, which it's great for getting your seedlings in and out of there. But at the same time, if you need to close this back up, there you go. Now we're going to put in the soil. Uh, like I uh, have mentioned, I use Happy Frog organic potting soil. Okay, so you want at least three inches between uh, at least three but around four to five inches of soil in your container that way you have a, enough soil for good root development but you don't want to have so much that you your plants don't have room to grow then we're going to moisten the soil and I use this wonderful little gadget it's a flow master uh, it's a pump sprayer and it works wonderfully uh, to get this done. It uses air pressure which gives a nice quick stream of water and waters your things very fast. It also works um, in the summer if you have to water the, the jugs because some of them are drying out. It has a fine-tuned setting where you can mist this gently and you don't disturb the ceilings. I just like to make sure that the water is distributed evenly in the soil, that everything's nice and moist. You want it moist, but you don't want it sopping wet because you don't want your seeds rotting. Okay, there we go. Next, we're going to be planting seeds. Today, I am planting some onions. And for onions, I personally find that I can just sprinkle them on the top and they're happy happy so that's what I'm going to do how many seeds did you put in there well the package says that there's a minimum of 150 seeds in there 
and I think I used about half the packet. So you're looking at about 75 or so seeds in here. They do great in cramped spaces. They, they grow just fine in here and transplant just fine. So they do very good in a tight spot. So we're going to turn this now to a mist and just wet it down again. I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of soil over the top just so they have a little bit of dark and then I'm going to press it in to get them seeded in there that way if you were to get a rainstorm if you don't get snow um, it helps the seeds not get uh, disturbed so pressing that in there pretty good okay next up putting a label inside your jugs. We put a label inside and right on the outside what we have in here. That way um, if one label gets damaged or ruined we at least have another label to try to figure out what's going on. I buy these bad boys on, on Amazon. I will leave a link to where I get these. Um, really good deal for these. A lot of people use uh, cut up uh, window blinds to work on the label, uh, right on the label we use a painter's pen. We do not use Sharpies because Sharpies fade. Even when they say they're fade resistance, they fade because these jugs are outside for upwards to, six, uh, to five to six months depending on when you put them out and when your planting date is. So use a painter's pen. For labels for myself, because my handwriting is atrocious, I actually use the Brother Label Maker. So there is my label on my label. <laughs> so we're going to put that in there. And I like to put it at an angle. So when I look in here, I can see what it says. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. Now we're going to dry off our jug in case we got water on it. Because we're going to be applying tape. And tape does not stick to wet surfaces. We're going to let this sit a few minutes to make sure that this area is dry. And while we do that, I'm going to show you how to work this paint pen. <clears throat> Think of this paint pen like as a can of paint or nail polish. You have to shake this up before you can use it. So give it a good shake for about a minute or so. Alright, so our paint pen's all shaken up, but now we have to prime the tip. You see the, the tip is completely white, there's no color. So now we have to prime it which simply means we press down on a piece of paper or something like that so the paint can start going uh, into the tip and uh, absorbing into the tip. And you want to be gentle with this process because the tips can be broken and they can uh, uh, come out quite easy if you're rough with it. Okay, so that didn't take long. See, I got some paint here. And uh, this will write for quite a long time before you have to prime it again. So I'm going to go ahead and write on here. Okay, so I wrote on there what this is and when I planted it. And I do this, uh, that way I can keep track on a log um, when this germinated and how long it took, especially if our weather pattern's really off. It's good to keep records of when you planted and when they germinated. That way for the next year you kind of can uh, plant a little better. Okay, the surfaces seem quite dry. We have our label in. And our label out. Now we're going to simply just tape this up. When 
taping the containers. I find doing it in small segments works best than trying to get tape to go all the way around in a smooth fashion. So I start here at the handle and just follow the seam. And right here where it curves, I snip it just down a little bit. And then fold that in so it follows that curve. And then we'll go all the way around this. It's all taped up and you'll notice that I have rubbed this quite a bit. You want to um, make sure that it's well adhered to the jug, but don't press it so hard that you crush the jug. You don't want to do that. So you want to be firm but gentle. You should, when you are done, and do this gently in case you, you failed, but you should be able to pick this up and it's a solid container again because you made sure you taped it good. The next step, set this outside in full sun. Uh, with these being onions, they are a cool weather crop. So I would expect them to start coming to life somewhere mid to late March, depending on our weather. And it's really fun to be able to look in your little hole here and see little baby sprouts growing and uh, it's just a wonderful process. So this is how you winter sow. Um, I hope that this video was informative. I tried to make sure I included every uh, point that I've had questions asked about. Uh, like I said earlier, if I missed something or if you have a question about winter sowing, please leave your question in the comments below and I will answer as soon as I know that I have the question there. Um, this is a very wonderful way to start seeds, very cheap way to start seeds. Um, I will link to my video um, above about the tools that are used so you can have it for reference. And that video also has the math about how much this costs to do. Um, if you were to go to a nursery or whatever and buy seed packs, how much does that cost you per plant? Um, are they organic? Um, for me, I can plant one of these jugs. And like I said, there's 75 seeds it's in here. And this jug costs me around $1.25 with the uh, COVID prices. So I have 75 onion seedlings in this jug with organic soil for a buck 25. Can you get them any cheaper than that, folks? So I hope, again, that this was very informative for you. If it was, please give it a giant thumbs up. Share it with other people who might be interested in a, a good way to grow seeds, uh, seedlings especially if they live in a small home or something like that. Um, this really opens up windows for a lot of people who want to grow their own food. I thank you so much for watching everybody. And if you're not subscribed to my channel already, I would ask that you uh, subscribe and come along on my journey. I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. So until next time everybody, bye bye.